Welcome to my video about how to read an ICG and 10 steps. This video is meant for medical professionals or students and anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about an ICG. So I will learn you uh, how to read an ICG by this 10 steps. So first let's start with the basics. Here you see a sinus rhythm. This is the electrical charge a heart pump has. It starts in your sinus node, goes through to the IV nodes, through the bundles of his. And there uh, the depolarization becomes a contraction of your ventricles. So first a con uh, contraction of your atrials, then a contraction of your ventricles. And that's how your heart pumps. Here the P line resembles uh, the contraction and the electrical uh, activity of your atrials. The QRS complex, which is seen here, is uh, the electrical forces of your ventricles contracting. And lastly, you have the T, and this is the repolarization of your heart. So this is systolic, and the T is diastolic. Now, now you take the ICG, and the first thing you do is you find if there is a sinus rhythm. You should look for, look for p-tops followed by QRS complexes. Every time you see a little p-top, there should be a QRS complex. If this is the case, you should also look if the p-top is positive and lead 1 to AVF, and if the p-top is negative and AVR, um, like here is the case. So that's normal, and then you have a sinus rhythm. Then you go to step 3. You check the frequency. Um, it can only be done easily if you have p-tops before every QRS complex, so when you have a sinus rhythm. If not, then you should uh, determine the atrial and ventricle rhythm separately. The way you do this is one big square of your ICG is uh, 0.2 seconds. So uh, you count the p-tops in a minute. So uh, this will learn you the frequency and the same you need to do separately for the arterial and ventricle rhythm if necessary. I added this table of um, normal values for heart frequencies you can use to check your own values. So for example if you have an ICG of a child which is four to five years um, the normal or A, the average heart frequency should be 110, the under average can be till 65 and above average 135 more or less is not okay. Step 4 you should look at the QRX axis. So first you need to determine the quadrant. Look in lead 1 and lead AVF and see if it's positive or negative. And then the combination of those two will tell you the quadrant. So you know which quadrant it is and then you can look in this table are you looking to, uh, to an ACG of an infant or a child? Oh, let me move my head. For example, if you are looking to an, um, a child of 1 to 3 years, the average axis will be 60 degrees, under average will be 10 and above 125. So 60 degrees would be positive in lead 1 and positive in AVF. And then it's completely normal. Um, I added this picture so you it can help you visualize the heart axis in 3D on your chest. This can be helpful uh, as an exercise. So then we look at step five, the intervals. Check what PR is. That's the beginning from P till the end, uh, till the beginning of QRS. And note that time in seconds. And you can check here if your values are normal values. And here, uh, check QRS which is the beginning of QRS till the end of QRS, and also note that time in seconds. Here I put the normal values for uh, all ages. Then check QT, which is the beginning of QRS till the end of QRS, and note that in seconds. Again, I noted the normal values. And check QTC, which is uh, QT divided by the square root of RR, and RR interval is the tip of the QRS till the next tip of the QRS. And the normal time, for example, for a child younger than six years would be 0 0.45 seconds. Then step six, look at the P-tops. 
uh, first of all check if it's a sign of right rhythm is if it is check the amplitude of your p tops uh, the duration of them in seconds check if there is right arterial hypertrophia you can see this um, if the p top is higher than three millimeters as this figure shows or check if there is left arterial hypertrophia which is when the p top uh, takes more than uh, 0.10 seconds here again i added some normal values then step seven check the qrs complex uh, check the millimeters of r and v1 and v6 s and v1 and v6 check the rs ratio uh, between v1 and 6 uh, check if there is left ventricle hypertrophia or right ventricle hypertrophia and um, check the aspect of q as in a normal uh, shape here i added a table the voltages and the RS ratio so for example if you're checking R in lead V1 for a child of one month uh, it should be 15 millimeters and so on and so on then your last step for the ECG is checking the T-top and the ST segment Has, is the T-top normal is it not hyper uh, uh, doesn't it have too much voltage does it have a correct shape and is there no ST depression uh, which could be a sign for a mitocardial infarct, myocardial infarct. Here again, um, for example, if you're checking the T top for a uh, adolescent, in V1 of V2 it should be negative, and AVF positive, and so on. That's how you can use these tables. So all this information you get, uh, you can use to make your conclusions. So is it a sinus rhythm? Uh, were all the times correct? Is your heart access normal? Use all of it and make your conclusion to determine if it's a normal ECG or there is pathology into play. And I just added here a stretch of all pathology. Cardiopathology pathology can be really a lot and I will probably make a new video on that. Um, so for now I hope you learned something about how to read an ICG. If you have any questions, please ask them and feel free to subscribe for my next videos. Thank you for watching.